This foundation will hold a house. Any shortcomings in workmanship have been more than made up with just the sheer volume of concrete involved. Welcome to the Tomarosa and our foundation update. We decided to do a gravel trench or rubble trench foundation, which is a trench filled with gravel and a drain pipe. In our location, frost depth is about 30 inches, so we dug a trench 30 inches deep, filled it with gravel and a drain pipe, and then the footer and the foundation wall sits on top of that. We had our trenches dug and Stacy has installed our water pipe from the pump house to the right of the windmill. He installed a frost free hydrant and he backfilled all the way to our building site. And here are the trenches. We had some rain so Stacy is having to go back and dig out a little couple places where some of them collapsed a little bit in but it's not too bad. A water pipe comes underground at about three feet through this corrugated four inch pipe. And that way it's sleeved and if we ever need to, we can pull the pipe without having to dig up the entire line, which is very helpful. Also, he ran a drain line uh, across our driveway where it drains out to daylight in the field. Where the septic and the water pass through the trench, we lined it with OSB. We also borrowed a laser level so that we can maintain the correct pitch for the perforated drain pipe. We connected the longer pieces of drain pipe outside of the trench. We then lined the trench with filter fabric and then connected all of the drainage pipe within the trench. We then checked the pitch of the drainage pipe before we did all of the backfilling of the gravel. Once everything was flowing correctly, we finished the backfill. Our next step involved backfilling around the water pipe and the septic where we had put the OSB to hold in the gravel. Luckily, our plan to use the tractor to pull out the OSB worked and we were able to move on to building the forms for the footer. Our forms needed to be 16 inches wide. We decided the depth would be nine and a quarter inches because we plan to use our two by tens again for floor joists in the house. That didn't quite work out. So our footer beam is way thicker than it needed to be, which just means it's gonna be a stronger overbuilt house, which is fine for us because we'd rather have that. Today's May 30th, we are working on our footer. Stacy's spraying down our forms. Concrete truck is coming. The concrete pour went really well. Thankfully, it was a pretty narrow form and it was easy to level out and pour. Another thing that Stacy framed up in case we had excess concrete was a wait for the tractor, and that turned out very well. Oh, and in case we didn't have enough work that day, pouring seven yards of concrete, we also had to pick up about nine acres of hay out of the field. 
you know, like you do. When we took off the form boards, we were very pleased with the concrete footer. We had used an air and trained exterior foundation mix and a concrete vibrator, so it was a very good looking footer. We also snapped a chalk line and then just started laying concrete block. Soon though, we realized that part of our foundation was not level. So we decided to go to plan B and not do concrete block, but go to a short poured concrete stem wall. So we bought more rebar and our own laser level and started building a plywood form about 16 inches high for a stem wall. To make it easier to fill the concrete tubes for the footers for the front porch, Stacy had the great idea to use an old milk strainer, and it worked great. This is the concrete pour that went on forever. I think it was like two and a half hours, and at the beginning you can't tell there was part of our wall that gave way at the bottom, so we had to move over and start at a different part. And this is where we developed the rule that we no longer do concrete on our farm. This is my self-portrait afterwards that I hope shows how much I hate concrete work. But we got it done and 95% went well. This is the one place that did not go well and we eventually would have to come back and fix. But the rest of it held and we had to leave that day. And we came back a week later, we took off the concrete forms, and we did not know what we would find. But luckily, everything looked very good. We did not use the concrete vibrator because it was too strong for our concrete forms. And so there was some areas that we needed to uh, parge. And of course there was the one area we needed to fix with some sackcrete, but otherwise it was a very good looking stem wall. Our final step for the foundation was folding in the filter fabric and then backfilling. We also used our farm all cub with the disc to go around and around and around the foundation to break up the clumps and smooth it out. So what are the lessons that we learned from doing our own foundation? Number one, foundation work is very hard and we're very glad to be done with it. Number two, we are not going to be doing any more concrete work on our own farm. We're going to hire out doing the concrete for our barn next year. We'll do some small projects, but bigger projects, I think, especially those above grade, we'll leave to younger professionals. <laughs> Number three, we were not able to reuse some of the 2x10s that we had for the footer foundation as floor joists because they had concrete on them and also because of the way we had to take them off the form. We were able to reuse them for different projects on the farm. That was something we didn't anticipate, so we had to buy some more lumber for the house. But that all worked out. It was just something we hadn't anticipated. Otherwise, the rest of it went well. We started on May 1st with Stacy digging the holes for the porch footers and we finished on June 19th with driving the tractor around with the disc. So a little bit longer, we hope to be done by the end of May, but now that we are above the foundation working with wood, things are going a lot faster. And stay tuned for the next update, and thanks for watching.